All of which leads us to ask, what is the reason why Ram is such an enduring symbol for millions of people? This is the question I want to pose to my special guest today. Devdat Patnaik is author, mythologist and someone who has written extensively on the Ramayana and characters around Ram. Appreciate your joining us, Devdat. I want to understand on this important day as a Ram Mandir rises in Ayodhya, what is it about the Ramayana and Ram in particular that makes it so special and so enduring amongst all Hindu scriptures? Well, Ramayana... Um is a story that was used to communicate the idea of dharma especially raj dharma across india so across india the common man knows words like dharma and knows concepts like karma uh, and maya and moksha which are big philosophical hindu ideas because of the ramayana we know it through stories so that's a unique thing about uh, Hinduism, that across India, in every corner of India, the stories were used to communicate complicated ideas. And uh, Ramayana became especially popular, not just in India, but it also spread to Southeast Asia. So even when you go to Cambodia, when you go to uh, Java, in Thailand, you find uh, uh, you know images of the Ramayana, which are used by the royal families to communicate the idea of kingship, dharma uh, what does it mean in a civilized society you know you you spoke of dharma but an interesting concept that runs through the ramayana is or, or for many is ram as maryada purushottam uh, which has been built over the years with various attributes to it valor compassion the way he treats fellow human beings like a boatman who helps him cross the ganga Shabri, who bites fruits and only gives the ripe sweet ones to Ram, the notion of valor, fighting battles according to the rules of con uh, combat, the rare instance where he breaks it when, he, when Bali escaped from hiding, uh, but notions of duty, that he goes into exile to keep his promise that he had made to his father, Dashrat, the sacrifices he makes going into exile. Do you believe all these values symbolize Ram even today? These are the internal values we need to remember, compassion, valor, sacrifice, However, we interpret the Ramayana for today's India. Um, that's very simplistic, Rajdeep. That's like a parable being told. You know, you tell a parable to children and say, be good, be honest, be compassionate, be nice, be very prescriptive. So that's a very Western way of explaining things that, you know, Ram was this, therefore you should be this. Remember, that's the reason I said it is difficult. We always talk of karma. Why do we talk of karma? Ram is the eldest son of the royal family and therefore his conduct is very different from Krishna who is the youngest son in a cowherd family. We are constantly being told that our actions are a function of our station in society, our privilege. What privileges do we get? And therefore rules keep changing. It's not a simple that if you're compassionate, you're following dharma. If you are following the rules, you're following dharma. That's a very pedestrian understanding of this. So let me explain this again in detail. Um, you know, in... Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, in the Ramayana, you have got a the hero of the Ramayana, that is Maryada Purushottam Ram, follows the rule. Now, he is balanced in the Mahabharata with Krishna, who is Leela Purushottam uh, uh, Krishna, which is the one who bends the rules and breaks the rules. So, Hinduism has two gods. You have Ram, who follows the rules, and Krishna, who breaks the rules. So, question is, rule following and rule breaking does not make dharma. And that is what they are trying to explain, because this idea that if you follow the rules, you go to heaven. If you break the rules, you go to hell is a very Middle Eastern, Western idea. In India, they'll say, look at the context. Look at the context. Who is for what are you talking about? Who is the mighty and who is the meek? So if you look at the story of the Ramayana, it's a very the villain of the narrative is someone who keeps breaking the rules and says my way or the highway, which is Ravan. Ravan says my way or the highway. He keeps breaking the rules. He doesn't respect the weak. Now, you told the story of Vali and Sugri, and everybody tells me about how Ram broke the rule. But rules apply in a place where everybody is respecting the law. Vali is a mighty monkey, extremely powerful monkey, and he treats his younger brother, who is weak, with contempt, which means he is the mighty who is overpowering the meek. 
when you are the mighty who is overpowering the meek, then you are not behaving in a dharmic way. You cannot then be uh, demand others to treat you in a dharmic way. You are behaving like an animal, the alpha who dominates the omega. And Ram tells in his dialogue, I have shot you with cunning because you have behaved like an animal. Therefore, you shall be treated like an animal. And that is dialogue very well written in the Valmiki doing is it's not about following the rules it is about helping the weak that's what dharma is about whether you follow the rules or you break the rules is not important the question is are you uplifting this the word in sanskrit for uplifting is uddhar karna are, are you helping weak sugriv is weak in the Ramayana, and Ram is helping the weak. In the Mahabharata, the Pandavas are the five brothers overpowered by 100 Kauravas. Krishna is helping the weak. So that is what we miss in the nuanced understanding of Mariyada Purushottam, Leela Purushottam. These are very refined ideas which come to us from the Dharma Shastras. You know, what I also find fascinating, uh, Devdad, and you've written about this, because while we are looking at the Ramayana today through the Ram Mandir's eyes, there are those who will say there are very different interpretations, different visions of Ram. There's a way North India will look at it. There's the way South India, Dravidian India will look at it. Adivasi communities look at it. There's the notion of Siyavar Ram as Sita's husband. There's the warrior King Ram. Is there a common theme or are there different interpretations across India and the world about how we view Ram? The, uh, you know, I have been reading the Ramayana uh, for the last 25 years, and there's a consistency across the Ramayana until we come to the 20th century, when people start interpreting the Ramayana based on their own politics. So suddenly in the 19th and 20th century, you have a North Indian Ramayana and a South Indian Ramayana and a Dravidian Ramayana and an Aryan Ramayana and a tribal Ramayana. These are only seen in the 19th and 20th centuries. They're not seen in the earlier versions. In every Ramayana, including the Jain Ramayana, and the Buddhist Ramayana, Ram is presented as someone who is steadfast. The quality that is continuously presented with Ram is of steadfastness. And um, there are incidents in the Ramayana that trouble people, which are seen problematic. And it is always saying that, hey, Ram, you are so steadfast. Why did you do this? So the, nobody questions the nobility of Ram. They will question certain actions. Why did you do this? Why did you do this? And there's always this conversation. But what comes across with Ram is this principle of a steadfast man. What we call interpretations, North Indian interpretations, North is a 19th century phenomena, 20th century phenomena. Um, in the 16th century, when, for example, um, uh, Tulsi Das Goswami Ji wrote the Ram Charitmanas, he presented Ram as a form of the divine. Now, that was a 15th, 16th century bhakti movement where the divinity was presented through the idea of Ram and Krishna. That's only happening in the 15th and 16th century. But Ram remains the steadfast, steadfast son, steadfast king. Um, whether, as far as husband is concerned, he's always faithful to a single wife. Ekam patni vrata. He never remarries. So that's the steadfastness. Uh, his decision and his relationship with his wife is questioned by everyone, but nobody questions his steadfastness. Now, if you go before that, if you go to the older works, that is the Sanskrit kavyas, the Sanskrit plays, where bhakti is not important, Ram remains the person who respects his father's decision, who says royal integrity and, you know, Jaban, what you call in India, commitment, integrity is very important. And that's why Ram the steadfast. You find this even in the Jain Ramayana, where he is considered a Baladeva. He is considered a great Baladeva who always follows the rules, who respects and is very important for him to maintain commitment, integrity. The words are augustness royal dignity. These are the words which repeatedly come with Ram over a period of 2000 years, which is why you find Ramayana in Cambodia, you find Ramayana in Thailand, you find Ramayana in Java, Sumatra, 8th, 9th, 10th century artwork, which show him in this very regal, you know, even the Thai king in the 17th century rewrote the Ramakian to say that this is the vision of kingship that I have, because he sees it as grace and dignity. This was unchanged until the 19th century, when you have postmodern writings, modern writings, new interpretations, a novel being invented, you have this 19th century 
innovative way of writing. So we must be very careful. We should distinguish the 19th and 20th century writing, which is highly political from more traditional writings, which appeared before the 19th century. You know, I'll play some of those images that we have of Ram's depiction over the years. But while listening to you, if there is a cynic out there, uh, a viewer who's an atheist, does Ramayana still have value for them? Well, you know, um, I always tell people that um, justice is not a fact. Um, it's a belief. We believe in justice. We believe in equality. It's, again, not a fact. Um, human society is based on belief systems. Even atheists have belief systems. They believe in the Constitution. They believe. So it's not a fact at all. It's not a measurable entity. And Ramayana... You know, science is uh, given a lot of importance, but, you know, science cannot measure jealousy. Science cannot measure pride and arrogance, nor can it regulate it. You know, so um, an atheist values history. But if you look carefully, history only creates quarrels. It tells you about the past in such a way and tells you about social injustice and tells you you should have a war. It justifies war. It gives ammunition to lawyers and politicians. Science creates weapons. How do you create peace? In order to create peace, you need stories. You need mythologies. You need belief in something transcendental, that there is something nice about being compassionate and good. Why do people like Ram go to the forest for 14 years when their father tells them to do it in order to maintain royal dignity and compassion? They could have easily fought back and said, no, this is my, it's my kingdom. I am the eldest son. And he could have fought Bharat over the kingdom as other brothers have in, you know, uh, Ravan in the Ramayana, Ravan kicks his brother Kuber out of Lanka and uh, becomes the king of uh, Lanka. So Ravan doesn't create Lanka. He kicks his brother Kuber out. Or when you look at Kishkinda, another city, Bali kicks his brother uh, Sugriv out and becomes the king of Kishkinda. But Ram doesn't do that. He says, no, I don't want to be the kingdom. I don't want to be the king. If my father wants another brother to become the king, he should be king. Now that's a impossible idea. It's such a fabulous idea that is being presented as a royal document. This is a great king who willingly gives away his kingdom to his younger brother because his father has told him so. And he says kingship, like we, I always tell people in my workshops that um, look at Ram the story, forget about whether it's history or whatever it is. Ask yourself does Ram have ambition? And when you read the Ramayana, you realize Ram doesn't have ambition. He's just fulfilling. He's doing what Dharma is, helping other people around him. He is feeding people. He's enabling people. He's dealing with complex situations like the gossiping of his kingdom about his wife's character. And he has to deal with this thing that, hey, I'm establishing Ramaraja, I'm making everybody happy. And what are people doing? They're gossiping about my wife's character and they're telling that she's not worthy of being a queen. So he's abandoning the queen, but never abandoning the wife. While he is the king of Ayodhya and lives in the palace and makes everyone happy, his wife is in the jungle, his children are living in the jungle, becoming musicians and singers and dancers. Kushalava in Sanskrit means an entertainer. So, you know, the story, is it real? It doesn't matter. It's talking about a higher value system. And I think it, it's not about theist and atheist. These are Western concepts about <coughs> you believe in God. These are about, val about being decent human beings. You know, it's fascinating the way you're putting it. You just mentioned Ram Rajya, a term that Mahatma Gandhi popularized. When he spoke about it, he said, and I quote, my Hinduism teaches me to respect all religions. In this lies the secret of Ram Rajya, speaks about the notion of equality, the need of the Ram Rajya ensuring, of my Ram Rajya dream, ensuring equal rights alike of prince and pauper. This is Gandhi. It seems for Gandhi, Ram Rajya is about moral authority, not just political authority. Is that something that those in public life today should learn to respect and appreciate this notion of Ram Rajya? Um, see, this is a political question, not a spiritual question. And um, notions like equality, justice, these are, as I said, um, very different and very mythological. Um, you know, For example, one group of people will say, God tells me that homosexuals have no right to exist. And therefore, in my land, homosexuals shall not live. Uh, now, there are vast parts of the world which claim God has 
parents told them to be homophobic. And therefore, they will say our ideal society is where homosexuals don't exist. Um, and that's their imagination of the perfect world. So everybody imagines the perfect world based on what they feel is appropriate social conduct, what they feel is right and wrong. A vegetarian will say, my ideal Ram Raj is where everybody eats vegetables and nobody eats meat and fish. So everybody, our, our ego tells us that our ego tells us that our Ram Rajya is exactly the way we want it to be. And that's the ahankar seducing us. What is Atma telling us? Atma is telling us that everybody is different. The Vanaras are different, the Rakshashas are different, the birds are different, the Bhadukas are different. Uh, everybody is different. And you have to work with different kinds of people in this world. And you have to do yagya. You have to feed them. They have to feed you. You have to negotiate with them and figure out how to live together. Not with a common commandment like a God giving you a common commandment and saying, oh, we'll all align to this rule which God has given us. But by talking to each other and figuring out how do we help each other? And that's coming back to the idea of dharma. How do I help you live your fullest life? And hopefully you will reciprocate. This you will, a reciprocation is what yagya is all about. I help you and you help me. And remember, Ram also doesn't get it. He creates Ram Rajya for his people. What do the people do? They gossip about his wife's character. And that's the great tragedy of the Ramayana, where they talk about the king who is doing so wonderful things for his people, but the people are gossiping about his wife's character and is forcing them to give up the queen, but not the wife. And these are the dharma sankats that Ramayana talks about. Not a simplistic thing that, oh, we should treat everybody equally. In this world, we nobody treats people equally. We, otherwise, we wouldn't have boundaries. We have these boundaries and countries are fighting each other over property. Around Right now, there are countries which are saying the right of self-defense, I can do genocide. And it's being argued in the court of law because a good lawyer can convince you of anything. Hinduism is not based on judgment day and lawyers. It's based on our own conversation with our ego and saying, am I being dominating in this moment? Am I being territorial at this moment? If, if I'm being dominating, if I'm being territorial, I'm being Ravan. I'm not being Ram. How do I make an ecosystem where other people feel comfortable? That's Ramayan. You know, since you mentioned Ra Ravan just there, who exactly then is Ravan in all of this? Uh, is he to be taken literally or metaphorically as the villain? We spoke about Ram. How do we look at Ravan? Well, Ravan is a very important character in the Valmiki Ramayana. And uh, he, what is interesting is that he always dis it's very important for them to say that he is Brahmin. He is the son of Vishrava Rishi. He's highly educated. He knows the Vedas. He is a worship of Shiva. Um, he is uh, expert in mathematics. He's expert in astronomy. He's expert in engineering. He's expert in so many things. So they describe this highly educated man, but not a wise man. And I think the, it's a metaphor for educated people who are not wise. What is the meaning of wise? Someone who cares for other people, who is aware of other people's insecurities, other people's hunger, other people's needs. He, rather than, Despite being educated, rather than being generous and content, he seems to be obsessed with his own needs, his own desires. And we meet people like this, right, who are rich, powerful, educated. And rather than being generous because we are in a privileged position, and Ra Ravan is in a privileged position. He lives in the golden city of Lanka. He has kicked his brother out. Look what he has done. He's kicked his brothers out. He only demands loyalty from his brothers, and those who are not loyal to him are kicked out again. Vibhishan is kicked out. R uh, Lanka is burnt. He's completely... What do have the people of Lanka done? They've done nothing wrong. And because of him, the city is burnt. The people die. He's not a good king. He's obsessed with himself. And that's what Valmiki is trying to communicate with us. Educated people need not be wise. Powerful people need not be wise. And I think it's a master stroke in narrative uh, to describe Ravana, insisting he's a Brahmin. Remember, the, we always told Ramayana is a Brahminical narrative. But we have a villain and they're saying, you know, and by the way, his mother is from a tribal community. So she is... Um, um, you know, one of the surnames she's given is uh, Salang Katang Kata. She, she who lives in the Sal forests. And Sal forests are found in the Madhya Pradesh region, Chhattisgarh uh, region. And the, but the, the best part about the story is they're telling you that here is an educated man. And look how arrogant he is. And Hanuman comes in front of him. And Hanuman is also from the tribal communities, apparently from the jungles. But he also speaks Sanskrit. Hanuman speaks Sanskrit and nobody calls him a Brahmin. Nobody calls him a Brahmin. We say, hey, Hanuman speaks Sanskrit. 
and Ravan is contemptuous of him and saying like, oh, what are you? Who are you? And I think that's a beautiful character creation. It's an idea. It's an idea. You know, you're, you're telling us these wonderful stories and characters that make the Ramayana so enduring. I just have a couple of more minutes. I want to get a quick couple of quick questions with possibly slightly shorter answers. They've done one on Sita, you mentioned her earlier, all this focus on Ram, even today over the building of the Ram temple, we seem to forget in a way, Sita, her sacrifice, the Agni Pariksha, questions over, you know, whether Ram did enough to, uh, to prevent her from going through what she uh, had to go through. How do you see that? How do you relate Sita to today's world? Well, Sita's, um, uh, Sita is, what we forget is her father is Janak. And a Janak is uh, the uh, king who established the Upanishads. So all the Vedic knowledge that we say comes from the Upanishads. And her father, why does Valmiki insist that ja uh, Sita's father is Janak? It is trying to tell us that Sita is an extremely wise woman. She understands where her husband is coming from. She understands where Ravan is coming from. She understands the world is a cruel place and she refuses to be a victim. So if you look at the Ramayana very carefully, um, um, Sita makes many choices. Not all choices work out. She chooses to feed Ravan and is abducted, but she never resents Ravan. She says, you are doing a wrong thing. You are educated man behaving like an idiot. Why are you doing this? Um, and when Hanuman says, come, let's escape together. And she says, no, let my husband come and rescue me because otherwise his reputation will be spoiled. She's not a victim. 21st century feminists paint her as a victim. But I think here is a wise woman who realizes the problem of kingship. She also knows boys with toys misbehave. And she is the wise woman who's seeing Ravan, the full of ego, and Ram struggling with Dharma Sankat. And I think the generosity in her is the idea that we keep forgetting. I think calling, see, looking at Sita as a tragic victim is an unfortunate 21st century narrative. You know, there's the other significant character, Hanuman, who's become very popular enraged Hanuman on the back of car stickers. You've written about him in your books. The stories of Hanuman, what do they tell us in a way? I think Hanuman is one of the most powerful characters in the Ramayana because when you, I always do, again in a workshop, you ask people, uh, Hanuman is helping Ram, helping people, helping Sita, helping, but what does he ask in return? Nothing. And he's just, he's observing how people are eager to take and are not interested in giving. And this is the conversation because later in later literature, Hanuman is equated with Shivji and the 11th avatar of Rudra. And the idea is that we are all, you know, I have heard people saying, Ye mera Hanuman hai, because he serves me. He does whatever I tell him to do. And I always ask them, Ki, Achha, aap Ram ho, kya uske liye? And then they have no answer. I said, are you a worthy leader? We all want great followers, but are we a worthy leader? And I think Hanuman represents that ability, someone who is very powerful, but who doesn't need the power to dominate, who doesn't need the power to be territorial like Ravan. He's the opposite. He's educated like Ravan. He doesn't need to show off. He doesn't need to kick his brother out of the kingdom. He doesn't destroy kingdoms. He is watching how educated people can be egotistically one and is observing how Ram struggles with Dharma Sankat and is observing how Sita never gets angry with people. She's never angry. She's just disappointed with people who do not seem to be uh, uh, generous and kind and content. And I think Hanuman is the witness, the powerful witness that is there in the Ramayana because he never asks for anything. He's happy with his, in the, Vana, in the banana plant and forest, he lives very happily. And with all the power, he could be a great king. He could be a great emperor. He could be, uh, you know, making softwares and, uh, you know, ruling the world with trillion dollar economies. But Hanuman is like, no, that's not the point of life. The point of life is to be discover the Atma, be kind, be content, be resilient, be generous. And I think that's what we learn from Hanuman. So as we conclude, Devdat, if there is one big idea that you believe is therefore central to our understanding of the Ramayana today, what is that big idea? Be a witness to the animal inside you, that, that which wants you to dominate, that which wants you to be territorial. That is Adharma. And that is, do not, this whole idea of all powerful God is not a Hindu concept. Judgment Day is not a Hindu concept. Debate, rationality, not Hindu ideas. Hindu ideas is very simple. Are you submitting to your ego, which makes you dominating and territorial? Or are you rising above it? And when you rise above it, you walk the path of Ram. When you rise above your ego, when you rise above uh, all the difficulties you might face in life and promote goodness, well, you might discover Ram. Devdat Patnaik, fascinating to...